It's a Girl Thing USA. It's been a great conference so far and we're not over yet. Up next is Senior Pastor of 3C Church in South Africa. It's a Girl Thing USA. Let's welcome Pastor Bert Pretorius. I want to get straight into the Word of God. Is that all right? And um, I know you're going to be blessed this morning. The, the title or the, 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 the theme of this conference is visionaries, visionaries. And you know, I like using the Bible when I preach. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, in the Amplified Version, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. If you cannot see, The Amplified Version says, where there is no redemptive revelation of God, the people perish. Another translation says, the people cast off restraint. Another translation says, they, they run wild when you cannot see. And that's why it's so important that we have godly visions. That means godly vision. But we see that there is also, and I want to start off with the negative side and go into the positive side because you've got to know where you're at, your condition to be able to deal with it. Can I get a big amen there? So you also have the blind, you have the blind that never see and they will never see. And that's a scary situation to be in. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 1, we read about the Pharisees, the Sadducees, who were the spiritual leaders of the day. They came to test Jesus. And when they said to him, Jesus, show us a sign from heaven, he said, how is it that you're asking for a sign? When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. In the morning, you say it will be foul weather today because the sky is threatening. In other words, you can, you can read the weather, which are signs. He says, you hypocrites. He says, you know not how to discern. In other words, you know not how to look. You don't know how to see. The face of the sky but you cannot discern the signs of the time. So in other words, you know, how to, you know how to discern, you know how to see. By looking at the sky, you can discern the weather. He says, but you cannot discern, you cannot see the signs of the times. He says in verse four, a wicked, adulterous generation seeks after a sign. In other words, you're saying, Lord, prove yourself to me. Prove yourself. See, that's the blind who will never see. Because if you can't see God already, you're blind. He says, a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And listen to what Jesus says. And he says, you're looking for a sign? He says, no sign will be given. He says, except for the sign of Jonah. But except for that, he says, no sign will be given given, he left them and departed. So this is how Jesus deals with an adulterous and wicked generation. He says, you're looking for a sign? You're asking for a sign? Sign, show me, show me, do this. Tell me you love me. You love me, Jesus. You know, give me a sign. Just show me. I'm looking for a sign. Then he says, you know what? No sign for you. I'm out of here. Mic drop. Off he goes. I'm gone. We need to understand that every single one of us was born blind. Since the fall of Adam, everyone on the earth was born spiritually blind. So we fall into two categories. Those who will never see and know God. And those who by the grace of God and the revelation, illumination of the Holy Spirit 
are enabled to see and listen to this and have an intimate relationship with Jesus. I'm not talking about attending church. I'm not talking about fulfilling religious duties. I'm talking about an intimate relationship with Jesus. Those who reject Jesus will remain forever blind. But those who confess Jesus as Lord and Savior will be given spiritual sight as well as spiritual life. Unfortunately, we have people that do not know that they are spiritually blind and do not care that they're spiritually blind. And even when offered sight, they refuse it. And we read in the Bible, and I I want you to understand the danger of this. We read this in the Bible. Jesus spoke about it in John 1 verse 9. He spoke about Jesus that comes to give light to every person in the world. And verse 10 says, he was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. Listen to this. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. Romans 1 verse 21. Listen to this. Although they knew God, although they knew God, although they knew God, They did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful. Why? Because they became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. This is God, people who know about God. You know how many people I've spoken to that have grown up in Christian homes? I was speaking to a man just last week. And as I was sitting down, he doesn't believe in Christ, but he lives by the principles. Because daddy was a Christian, mommy was a Christian. Therefore, they had Christian principles. They walked in integrity. They walked in harmony. They were married, raised up their children with dignity. And what happens is, I was speaking to him and he is a family, a cousin of mine and I'm sitting there and he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a dignified person, good values. But he has chosen to deny the Christ of the values. Married, wife, raising the children with the values that were instilled by his parents but he has chosen to deny the Christ of the values. And I asked him, but why then Why then do you live by the values? I said, you're married, right? He says, yes. I said, why you get married? You know, I need to get married. I said, I said, you only got one wife? I said, you don't have a girlfriend? I said, why don't you get a few girlfriends? You see, when it comes to the values, on what basis? I said the values that have been instilled in you from your parents that you live by and that you believe in, those values, by the way, I said to him, are Christian values, Christ values that you live by. I said the problem is not that you live by, the problem is now when your kids ask you, why must I get married, what are you going to tell them? Now you've got no absolute, you've got no Bible, you've got no word of God. Are are, are you hearing with? He said to me, he said to me, Bert, I, I hear what you're saying. He says, but my intellect cannot get me to believe. I said to him, but then, I said, being alive is a miracle, right? I said, the way the body works is an absolute, it's a miracle. You see, we don't need a sign. If you, if you cut yourself, you, you you bleed for a while and then it just stops bleeding by itself. It's a miracle. 
If you put a camera on that cut and you film it over four or five days, the cut closes and it heals that you can hardly see there was a, an injury. No one does anything that happens by itself. Now, if we speed it up, we take four days of the camera, four days, and we speed it up and play it over 10 seconds, and we put that on a screen in 10 seconds, you see that healing, we look at it go, wow, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. Well, the only difference between the reality is the speed. Because it happens over four days, is it not a miracle? Are you hearing me? See, the evidence of who God is, is everywhere. So I said to him, I said to him, you're an incredible individual with, with intelligence. And so I said, how did you get there? He said, wow, the big bang. And he came up and said, I said, what? I said, I said, you know how crazy, how stupid you sound. And he's very educated. I said, now you say my stuff, your intellect is too stupid or foolish to believe. I said, and listen to yourself, you stupid. I said, and he agreed. He says, look, if he, if he hears what he's saying, yes, it sounds stupid. I said, I said, you chose. I said, between the two stupids, you chose your stupid. <laughs> it's still foolish. What evidence? No evidence, no nothing. Are you hearing me yet today? And that's why they're seeking for a sign. There is the blind that will never see. And that's why we read 1 Corinthians 2.14. It says, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolish. It's stupid to him. For he cannot know them. Why? They are spiritually discerned. Shout it out. Say, be spiritually discerned. You can't discern it out of yourself. Ephesians 4.18 says, their understanding is darkened, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their hearts. We even read in the Old Testament, Jeremiah 5.21, he says, you foolish people without understanding, you have eyes that cannot see, you have ears and you hear not. I know some of you are thinking about your children right now. <laughs> Psalm 73.22 says, I was so foolish and ignorant, I was like a beast before you. You are so foolish, you're like an animal. Micah 4.12, it says, but, it says there, but they do not know the thoughts of the Lord, nor do they understand the counsel. The contributors to the spiritual blindness, firstly, is sin. What is sin? Sin is loving darkness. John 3.19 says, this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than the light. So sin, your own flesh. And that's how it was with Eve. When Eve was sitting in the garden under the one tree she should not be close to at all of the thousands of trees that she could eat of and sit under, she's sitting under the one tree that God said, don't touch this. Are you hearing me? Say to me, wrong place. She's sitting there. What is she looking at? She's envious of the fruit she can't have. Are you, are you hearing me here today? And that's why there will always be a test. There will always be that, there will always be a choice. Like I said, like I said to the man, I said, 
I want you to know, I said it straight. I said, you must know today you have chosen and rejected God. I said, note, please, I'm saying. And I did ask him, I said, I beg you that when we leave and depart, give Jesus a chance. But I said, now where? I said, you have chosen. He said to me, yes, I have chosen. You see, you will always have the right to choose to believe. Because we walk not by sight. We, uh, we, we walk by faith. That's spiritual sight. We don't walk by the physical. But here's Eve sitting under, close to the tree and looking at that fruit. And then the snake comes. Come on, somebody. And starts bringing doubt on the goodness of the Lord. Start making Eve suspicious as if she's missing out on something. As if God is keeping her from not having what she could have. Doesn't that sound familiar? Is it, doesn't that sound familiar? Doesn't that sound like a voice that you are dealing with every single day of your life? And what does that do? It removes the ability to see. Because your eyes are on the wrong things. That's why when the snake starts speaking, she listens to the snake. My question is, why did she not deal with the snake like normal people do? <laughs> what do you do when you see a snake? Huh? You run. Or you kill it. Or eat it. Come on, somebody. See, if you looked right at the snake, somebody would look at it with fear and run away. Of course, somebody would look at it and see it as a meal. You understand what I'm saying? But, but, but the thing is, she didn't see the snake for who it was. Why? Vision. 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 She was looking at what she was looking at what she wanted. I want what I want, and I want it now. Do we have some singles in the house here? Yeah? And you're looking at this boy. See, but you're looking at the wrong thing. And I want what I want, and I want it now. There's something that draws you in the flesh. See, and it entices you. Your, your eyes are then, and while your eyes are in the wrong place, the right boy. The husband boy. The husband boy. Hello, the husband, the one that will lay down his life for you, protect you, work for you. See, you, you don't see why your eyes are not there. You see, you're looking and conversing with a snake. And some of you, You've already connected yourself with the snake. Some of you are in business partnerships with the snake. Some of you have sold ties to a snake. Why? Because you're looking in the flesh what you want. You want what you want what you want. We've had so many ladies marry the wrong guy out of the church 
out of the church, whoop, that's it, we know it's gone, it's finished, over, that's it. No ministry, no dignity, no nothing. And because they're honorable people, they work. They work at that marriage, but then that's their job. Their job is not to fulfill their purpose, it's to keep their marriage together till they die. The snake. See, when you want what you want, when you want what you want, and it's an obsession, what you want, and you're obsessed with what you want, now you don't see the snake for the snake. Why? Because your eyes are not on the snake. You're just hearing the voice of the snake, what you want, and the suspicion. Your eyes is, are you hearing me here today? Say it me, vision. vision. Shout it out. Say it me, vision. vision. So sin, the devil, and then what happens is when you get to the place where you've allowed sin and the devil to control your life for too long, listen to Luke 19.42. It says, if they had known, even you, especially this your day, the things that make you for your peace. He says, but now you are hidden from, now they are hidden from your eyes. There's a time where God says, okay, you want what you want, go have what you want. And what happens, you have God's sovereign judgment. And now as a blind, you will never see. So when we talk about those that will never see, why are they in that condition? It's because they seek darkness. Yeah, we have the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and these guys hated one another. But when it came to Jesus, it's amazing how they suddenly became united together by their love of spiritual darkness. That's why you'll always have a sin buddy. Are you hearing me? That's why you don't go sin by yourself. You always got to drag somebody down with you. Are you hearing me? You got to bring some. You don't, you don't go get drunk by yourself. You got to get, are you hearing me? You people, whatever you do, you bring other people along with you to validate. They were bound together, although they had issues with one another. It's amazing in their spiritual darkness. And what did they do? They cursed the light. Unbelief will always find a way to reject the truth, even to the point of denying the undeniable. They work the lie. They work the lie. They work the lie. They work the lie. And that's what we find when it comes to the sisterhood, the womanhood, motherhood. The devil's working the lie. Trying to be confusion as to your purpose. Trying to bring it down on a fleshly level where it's all about you. No, while in your mother's womb, God says, I knew you. He says, I formed you and I ordained you. You, you were born on purpose. And that's why the devil will attack. He will attack the woman while from while still in the mother's womb because he knows, ladies, once you're born, you're dangerous. You're dangerous. There's nothing as dangerous as a woman that knows who she is. There's nothing as dangerous as a woman who knows the divine power of God that's placed within her, the ability that she has. And that's why the devil will sow confusion into your life from a young age. And that's why we see so many people struggling with, with, with gender confusion, with their sexuality. That's an attack from when you're born. What do you think? Because the devil knows if he can confuse you, he's immobilized you. Immobilize you of being an example. Immobilize you as being the model of womanhood for the next generation. If he can bring confusion in you. And that's what he's done. He's brought confusion into the world that people don't even believe and come say, but I don't feel comfortable within my body 
stupid God. He made a stupid. And then people mutilate themselves, listen to me, by their own decision. And the devil sits back and gets all the devils together and, and, and says, hey, come, come, come sit. Watch, watch. There's another one that's going to cut themselves. Watch, watch, watch. See, that's violence. The devil's violent. I mean, it's not that he gets someone else to cut you. He gets you, you, he gets you to destroy yourself. He's violent. But that's, that's, he works the lie to such a degree that our politicians are encouraging the violence. And the devil says, no, wrong body, change your body. And Jesus says, no, the word says, no, it's not the wrong body, it's the wrong mind. He says, renew, not renew your body, renew your mind. You're thinking wrong. Change your mind. Open your eyes that you can see. Because when there's confusion, there is no confusion with God. Absolutely zero. A confused Christian is a disobedient Christian. A confused Christian is somebody that doesn't want to see. Now we've got to raise up our daughters. How do you raise up your daughters with that rubbish? And that means from you and your generations to come, you cannot be a legacy. When you die, your life dies, your legacy dies. How do you raise up the next generation of women? That you're the life givers. And not just in the physical, but as in the physical, also in the spiritual. It's the same as in the natural, then also in the supernatural. As you have the ability to bring life into the world, so with your spiritual. And that's why when it comes to the Jewish religion, remember it's, a, it's the, the woman that declares the mother is Jewish, the kids are Jewish. Not, not the father. If the father is Jewish, doesn't mean the kids are Jewish. It's if the mother is Jewish. So you'll see when it comes to church, when you have a mother that's on fire for Jesus, when you've got a mother that's a prayer warrior and that's getting up in the mornings with Pastor Shanae, five o'clock and you are praying and you're interceding and you're taking authority in the name of Jesus. You hearing me here today? Now you understand the fight. But you see, if you're confused, you're useless. If you're a victim, you're useless. That's why we come to God. And please, and understand this. Don't, we're not being judgmental here. Please, we're not belittling people that are struggling. Don't misunderstand me. And, and that's not the only issue people struggle with but I'm just showing you where things are preached from educated people with all the degrees that they have in the world, doctor, doctor, whatever, but they're as blind, they're foolish, they're stupid. I've got to deny my intellect to believe what they say. The natural intellect. So we're not judgmental. When people are struggling with it and it's genuine struggles, we're not there to judge. We're not going to come and say, well, you know, no, no, no. We're there to walk and help and say, hey, and we're there to befriend. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You understand? But when you preach it as gospel, no, then you've got an issue. Yeah. You understand? If you want to come tell my children that that's the way, then there is an issue. You're hearing me here today? Yeah. My time. Oh, my time. They curse the light. And that's why they said, give us a sign. A wicked generation seeks after a sign. No sign shall be given. You see, sensationalism always appeals to the flesh. 
Many people are willing to believe almost anything as long as they get, as long as the claims are accompanied about the inconceivable spiritual entertainment, in other words. Jesus will have no part of cheap, faithless sensationalism. But what we've got to do is make a decision. Say to me, make a decision. Say to me, make a decision. To live by faith. And that's why Hebrews, and that was my introduction, by the way. Now I'm going to start the message. Which is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Everything is faith. Bump your neighbor and say, it's all faith. It's all faith. It's all faith. It's all faith. Jesus. When Jesus was tempted in the desert, every time the devil came to tempt him, Jesus says, it is written. He didn't say, oh, I sense. (laughs) He didn't say, the Holy Spirit said. He didn't say, God told me. What did he say? It is written. You need to know the Bible. Can I get a big amen there? You need to know the Bible. Some of you are sensing and sensing, but you, you, you know, God told me. But it's amazing how schizophrenic God can be. You know, he's up one day, down one day. Next day, one day he's here, next day, you know. One day, you know, maybe it's not God speaking to you. Maybe you're talking to yourself. (laughs) Say with me, it is written. So when we talk about faith, faith comes by miracles, by seeing miracles, by seeing the supernatural, by a sign. Miracles don't increase your faith. And if it does increase your faith, it's only for a period of time. If you're not solid in the word of God, you're going to fail, you're going to fall. So sensationalism. Faith doesn't come through the supernatural, doesn't come through miracles. The devil is supernatural. The fight is in the supernatural against the principalities and powers of the air. So we can't say it's supernatural. How do you know it's not God? How do you know it's not the devil? Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, 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 you know, God, I got a million bucks. Well, how do you know the devil didn't give it to you? The, the devil also doesn't mind giving away money. The, because he knows the million is going to keep you from church on Sunday. Because now you buy a place at the, at the coast and you've got to go down for holidays every day. And now you get a car. You understand? You know, and when you got saved, I mean, goodness gracious, it took you three taxis to get to church and stuff like that. Now God has blessed you and now you've got to go back to the village on the weekends. Pastor, oh, it's the family. A promotion doesn't mean it's God. You see, so you've got to discern by the Spirit. Now, nothing wrong with a promotion. Come on, somebody. And a promotion can be God. You understand? The million bucks can be God. Some of you go, oh, I see that million, I see that million. Yeah. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if that's your focus, that doesn't prove it's God or not God. So that's not where faith comes in. I don't believe in God for the works. I believe in God because of the word. Can I get a big amen there? It's not my emotions. It's not my feelings. It's not the goosebump. It's not the miracle. But it is written. The word of God says, hallelujah. Therefore, we look unto Jesus. 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 Jesus, The author and the finisher of our faith. Isn't that incredible? So therefore, he says to us, look. We say, oh, it's so hard. It's so difficult, pastor. No, it's not hard. The decision is hard. 
But the decision is hard because of you. So, but once the decision is made, it's easy because God carries you. Are you hearing me? What's difficult is overcoming your fear. What's difficult is taking your life and saying, okay, Lord, I put my whole life in your hands. And that's why Matthew, and I close with this, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, he says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. So you're overwhelmed. What does he say? I will give you rest. But listen to this. The next verse is the verse that matters. Because he says, take my yoke. This is Jesus speaking. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. My burden is light. What's the difficult part is the coming. See, because you can't come without forsaking. See, what's the difficult part is the repentance, the coming. All you who labor and are heavy laden, Lord, I come to you. I place my life in your hands, my kids, my marriage in your hands. I place my workplace, everything that I am. Lord, we place our nation. We place it in your hands. We come to you, Lord. And and, and as we labor, we're overwhelmed. And then he says, okay, now that you come to me, he says, now take. So let me take. So let me take. So let me take. So take means take my yoke. A yoke means work. Yoke yourself with Jesus, like with the oxen, the oxen, it's so that they can work. But he says, take my yoke. He says, and learn. And do what? And learn. And do what? And learn, which means you won't get it right immediately. Are you hearing me here today? He says, for my burden is light. It's easy and light. What's difficult? The decision. It's the faith. See, faith is the decision. But yeah, I've got good news to you. How do you live by faith? Vision. Looking unto? Looking unto? Looking unto? The author. It means the originator, the beginning. And the? That word means the perfecter. He will finish it. You will finish. He's got you. But you can't put your eye on your need. It's got to be on Jesus, his purpose. Can't be on your wants. It's got to be on Jesus, his purpose. He says, learn from me. And that's why it says in 1 John 5 verse 3, it says the following. It says 1 John 5 verse 3, it says, For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. What's his commandments? Loving God, loving people. Love the Lord your God. Love your neighbors. You love yourself. His commandments are not burdensome. Verse 4. For whatever is born of God does what? Overcomes the world. Listen to this. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. What? Our? Our faith. Can't hear you. What? Our faith. What is your faith? Your faith is the decision. Of coming to him. I don't understand, Lord. I don't know. I, I put my children in your hands. I don't, I don't know. I don't, Lord, I don't understand. Yes, I'm struggling. Whatever you're struggling with. Lord, I don't understand. I don't know how it works. But Lord, I come to you. I trust you. I trust your word. And this is what happens. The decision is difficult. But he says, when you start walking with me, it's easy. And it's light. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're so easy to love. Tell your neighbor, you're so easy. So easy. Turn to your other neighbor and say, yeah, and you as well. You, you, yeah. And then tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I'm extremely easy to love. I just know that. Uh, Tell your neighbor, I'm so lovable. I, I know, I'm so lovable. It's difficult. It's easy to forgive. The choice is difficult. 
You see, but once you've made and say, look, I'm going to forgive. The person used you, sexually abused you, hurt you, got a loved one that was murdered. Or I'm, I'm talking genuine. I'm not talking, oh, you didn't greet me, rubbish. <laughs> you understand? That's baby stuff. I'm talking people that have been raped, people that have, you know, we, we go through stuff in South Africa. Now to genuinely forgive, the choice is hard. But if by faith you make the choice, it's easy. It's easy. It's easy. See, now God heals. Now God heals. Why don't you stand to your feet? Just stay where you are. While your eyes are on your pain, while your eyes are on your lack, while your eyes are on your need, while your eyes are on your lust, your sin, you will not see. And it's your decision whether you're going to be forever blind. Or you can turn to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Can you believe? It's all. It's all. It's all. That's all. Can you believe? That's all. God doesn't have to prove himself to me. You see, I, I believe first. And then when I start walking, I see the goodness, the loving kindness and goodness of the Lord that follows me all the days of my life. You, you understand what I'm saying? But it's first the choice that I make. Take my eyes off everything. I don't want what I want. I don't want what I want. I'm suspicious of my desires. I've hurt myself too many times. Done with it. No, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, I believe you. My faith in you. My foundation. I don't know everything. I don't understand everything. I don't, I don't know. I mean, who knows how to raise children anyways? Can I get a big amen there? Amen. We need God. Are you hearing me? Just raise your hands. Just stay where you are, Heavenly Father. Thank you for this time. And Lord, where our eyes have been skewed and we've lost vision, please forgive us. Because with that, we, we lose hope. With that, we become overwhelmed. But Lord, the hard decision is trusting you. Forsaking what we know. Forsaking what we used to. Forsaking the stuff we live by. And turning away from that. And focusing on Jesus and say, Lord, I need you within my life. And Lord, that's the decision we make, that we will live by faith. So that we can see, Lord, help us to see. In our marriages, as parents, in the workplace, in our nation, Lord. And as ladies here today, understanding the significance that you have placed on the inside of us, inside of you. And the power that God has ordained inside of you to transform not just this nation, but the nations of the world. Thank you, Lord that you are our firm foundation. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Thank you, Jesus.